Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's your favorite esthetician here. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome. My name is Amaka. And today we're addressing part two of our alcohol series. In the first part, if you haven't watched it, please watch it first before you watch this one. We talked about, you know, good and bad alcohols, whether or not that terminology should even be there in the first place. And we just addressed, you know, the functions and, you know, properties and side effects of both good and bad alcohols yeah um in this part we are going to be addressing some of the very scary claims or scary conclusions scary findings that have been made against simple alcohols aka ethanol alcohol in nature that's appropriate alcohols all those type of alcohols we'll be addressing them in this video so if you're interested in this please keep on watching <laughs> Let's talk about what are these claims? What did they say alcohol did or didn't do? Now, for the purpose of this video, when you hear alcohol, you're not talking about simple alcohols. So, yeah, what did it do? Number one, <coughs> they said that it can destroy your living cells. That's number one. Two, it causes inflammation, which means I know inflammation is just a, an umbrella term for everything. With information, there's post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. With the same information, there's aging. With the same information, there is free radical. Different things can be happening at the same time when there's information on your skin. They say alcohol does that. Also, it's said to denature your proteins in your skin and also, you know, reduce enzyme activities in your skin. Essentially, it's going to destroy your skin. <laughs> when I saw this thing, when I read it, I was like, eh? so why are people still using this in their product and made me you know do some digging so today please don't shoot the messenger i know that this is a topic that people are very passionate about this is just me gathering information from different places and giving my own opinion i will list down everywhere i got my information from i will also put videos of people that are against my opinion so that you can watch and read everything and make up your mind or whether you will totally avoid products that have you know simple alcohol so yeah now we know what the findings are let's talk about how these findings were made how did they come about this conclusion now the first thing is different studies were made several studies were made um in vitro now what in vitro means is when you're conducting a scientific, it's either conducted in vitro on, or in vivo. I don't know if they have other methods. I'm not a scientist, but when I the research research that I have been reading, is either in vivo or in vitro. In vivo is when it's conducted on a life, a living organism. So, for example, um, it's conducted on human skin or on animal skin, and in vitro is when it's conducted in a dish or in a tube. Do you get? Now, so these studies were conducted in vitro, so in a dish. And what they did was they put in like living cells or make believe living um, living cells in a dish. Um, they poured alcohol in it, simple alcohol in the dish, and they covered this dish and allowed it to sit for you know long period of time. In some cases, up to twenty four hours. And they found out that in those in that in those instances, alcohol did kill skin cells and led to inflammation in the skin hmm. i see yeah you guys are very smart i'm sure by now you're already like like really <laughs> even me i was like really hey, let's let's analyze this experiment now the very obvious one is that this is not practical this is not this is not real life man. it's like wanting to conduct a research on whether or not using salt would lead to a sore in the tongue and when you want to conduct that research what you now do is you get a cup full of salt shove it to somebody's mouth keep the mouth closed for like a whole day don't open it and then look at the tongue and see oh it led to a sore is that how we use salt don't you put like small bits inside like a pot of soup and use the soup over you know for some people like me, a period of one month, do we fill a cup with 
salt, then shove it in our mouth and keep our mouth closed for an entire day. Is that what happens? No. So this, this test is not practical. So let's dissect it. Let's dissect it. Now, the first thing is they put like living cells in a dish and, you know, kept it in contact with alcohol. The first thing is we don't put alcohol on our living cells. Now, for you to find our living cells, you'd, some of them, you can find them in the stratum lucidium, which is the layer just before the stratum corneum. Now, the, this part of the skin, the skin barrier, and the uppermost layer of the skin is made up of 10 to 20 layers of dead skin cells, aka that is your stratum corneum. And my video on skin barrier explained all of this. I'll link it here. Please watch it. Yes. And it's just not, it's not just normal skin, dead skin cells though. These skin cells are, you know, filled up with keratin that makes it very insoluble and tough. Mm -mm, it doesn't stop there. These skin cells are also embedded in lipids. You have the cholesterol, free fatty acids, and ceramides that bind these cells together and makes even active ingredients that you want to enter does not even enter it. So, why conduct the experiment on living cells? Like, the alcohol doesn't get to our living cells. So, that's one. So, as we explained in the first chapter of this video, alcohol um, is very volatile, meaning that it evaporates. You know when you put alcohol in your skin and feel the cooling, is, and you feel the cooling effect? That is it evaporating. It, as in, as it's landing on your skin, is leaving immediately. But, no, what they did was that they put alcohol in contact with living cells, then they covered it to prevent it from evaporating. Is that what happens in real life? The answer remains no. Now, in fact, in a study conducted on pig skin in vivo, so meaning that it was applied on pig skin, and pig skin is very similar to human skin. Now, and in that research, in that study, they used 100% ethanol. Mind you, in your skincare cosmetics, you, a lot of times there's a maximum of, let me say, 10%. So they used 100% ethanol on pig skin and they found out that 97% of it evaporated almost immediately. How much more when you use just 10%? Imagine how like negligible the ones that remain on your skin is. So obviously, obviously, we can't rely on these in vitro studies because they don't depict like real life. So let's look at the studies that were actually conducted on human skin in vivo and let's see, you know, what their findings were. Now, first of all, these studies were conducted on the inner forearm, so that's this area, and they were conducted using um, like seven, 60 to 80 percent um, alcohol. Remember, that is higher than is now cosmetics, and they were, you know, applied on the skin several times a day. In some instances, up to a hundred times a day. And they were applied for a period of let me say seven to fourteen weeks. And in some cases, they were cleansing the skin and applying, cleansing and applying, cleansing and applying. And what was found? Now, the first one is I'm just summarizing. The first one is that no inflammation was found. Like it did not cause inflammation. So the disruption in the skin barrier was very minimal. In fact, very similar to water. You know, water disrupts the skin barrier, right? So when it's evaporating, it you know, takes water along with it. When they compared um, it side by side to what um, simple alcohol does, it was almost the same thing, nothing significant. It also found that dehydration and dryness could occur. Um, however, several studies also showed that putting moisturizing ingredients and humectants in products that are formulated with this type of alcohol can counteract that dryness and dehydration. So I will not act like, you know, this test actually painted the exact picture of what happens in practice. In the sense that, number one, they used like <laughs> way higher percentage of alcohol that is used in skincare. Two, they applied it, come on, like a hundred times a day. Like, multiple times a day some cases 100 times a day three it was conducted over a period of you know seven to 14 days for which skincare you know is used for a very long period of time and also it was done in the forearm which is thicker and a lot less sensitive than the skin on the face so we can see that there is not the exact picture of what happens in reality but it is a more practical approach it is if there's any one that we would take it will be this one. This is the more practical and a more and a lot more close to what is experienced or what is done in real life. <sighs> so
so in my opinion now i'm sure you already know my opinion is in my opinion now the claims these claims that have been made are outrageous there's nothing backing them up as in to the best of my knowledge as at the day i'm making this video i have not seen any evidence that you know backs up these outrageous claims and honestly speaking if simple alcohol and you did not have any function in skincare if this was a fragrance topic which will consign me okay there's a there's a possibility i beg forget about it now remove it from your skincare now simple alcohol is not like that it actually has a role in skincare and it actually can save somebody's life that's me being dramatic again but let me explain what i mean um why I'm very passionate about this topic, why I went the extra mile to really read and understand whether or not these claims are valid, is that I recommend a lot of sunscreens that have, you know, simple alcohol to my clients. Um, most of my clients are black and they stay in Nigeria. Nigeria is very hot and very humid. Um, I'll look into this camera and boldly say it. You know me, I know you, you. Most Nigerians do not use sunscreen. Our mothers did not use. We are the ones that are even trying. Like 90% of Nigerians don't use sunscreen. The ones they have tried, they have tried, they tried Neutrogena, tried this one. If it's not white, it's greasy. What's that? They don't use it. The only reason why some people now use sunscreens because they are now being introduced to Korean sunscreens that feel very lightweight. Now we all know that using sunscreen can protect somebody from melanoma, like skin cancer, which is life threatening. So that's why I said, you know, um, alcohol can save your life. That is the correlation, but that was a bit extreme and dramatic. But you get my point. So is it even extreme and dramatic? Say, I think it's a fact. It can actually save your life. If you start wearing sunscreen simply because it is lightweight and simply because alcohol was put into it yeah my fault i was saying yeah and for that reason that's why i went the extra mile for that with all your fiscal sunscreens all these things they are good but of what use are they if they will not be used so it's easier for me to convince people to use sunscreens when they can actually tolerate wearing it not convince somebody to use sunscreen the person wears it on her skin and she's itching throughout the day sweat is dripping down her face her face is white ah oh girl that one hard you <laughs> so yeah 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 um anyway i'll leave all my links down opinions on this um issue is very very you know contradictory i did a lot a lot of research um i was just shout out to a lot more things she has a phd in chemistry and her website was a huge resource for this making this video i put a link to the article that actually you know opened my eyes to a lot of things also as i explained in part one whether or not you would use a product that have the product that have natural alcohol is dependent on several things number one your skin type and skin concerns people that have oily skin and stay in hot and humid regions tend to tolerate it better um so your skin concerns so if you have dry and eczema prone skin you may want to tilt towards towards more fatty and higher you know molecular weight alcohols then it, and also your routine do you have drying things in your routine do you have moisturizing things in your routine we also determine whether or not you opt for products with natural alcohol for example somebody that even someone that has dry skin that has a lot of products in her routine that has fatty alcohols that are rich in emollients and humectants can you know get away with using a sunscreen with simple alcohol um also your the formulation of the product in itself so far our general consensus or general agreement um as relates to the downside of, of simple alcohol is that it can be drying and dehydrating so getting products that are formulated with emollients and humectant to counteract that is a very very good idea you know at the end of the day do you if you don't want it you're not comfortable with it stay clear if you're okay with it carry good for me I don't think simple alcohol should be banished. If I think it's a great thing, it's a lovely thing, please bring more of it or formulate it right. Put emollient and humectant and we will buy it. Please, we will buy it. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.